Now today on the vlog, I wanted to take you on a quick tour of this room, which won't take very long because it's really, really tiny. I think it's about three meters by five meters, and this wide angle lens is making it look a whole lot bigger than it is. We'll show you the equipment we're using to run our double PC stream and the types of things you might want to look at if that's something that you're looking to do yourself. All right, let's go. Now, before I'd done this setup, I'd actually done one for the division over in the other room. And looking back, it's kind of horrible. And there are probably some things in this room that I wouldn't do again either. One of the things that I looked for when I was trying to set up both of these rooms was some content that could help me do that. I looked at other people's setups and that sort of thing, but there was a distinct lack of videos on the subject. So hopefully this helps some people. For me, at least, I like to think backwards when I'm doing some sort of setup like this. What's our end goal? We need to get something onto Twitch. So we need a streaming PC. I haven't quite figured out yet how to casually sit on the floor by a computer and all of that, but here it is. These are our three machines that we're using to run this setup. As I said, let's work backwards and start at the end. This is a machine that sends everything to Twitch. It's got a really nice beefy Intel Xeon CPU, but let's kind of distill things down a little bit. We need to figure out how we're getting video and audio into OBS for us to send out to Twitch. The video and audio part of the equation is actually pretty simple. We need video and audio from the gameplay, and we need audio from the person speaking on the microphone. So gameplay video and audio is going straight in through HDMI from this PC here. Then for the vocal mics, we're running a Behringer desk through USB, which is recognized as a sound device on the streaming computer, so we can pick that up in OBS. That desk is actually hiding away here behind this PC, and you can see here that we have two vocal mics plugged into that. That's the other thing that's always a little bit tricky. How do you get that game audio that's being sent over HDMI to the streaming machine also out through those headphones that we just had a look at? Now, there are ways to do it through Windows native audio recording and playback devices and that sort of thing, using stereo mix and whatnot. But the easiest way that I've found is to use a free program called Voice Meter Banana, which you can get from VB audio.com, I think, and you can use virtual cables and all that sort of thing if you want to. But to keep it simple, I would just grab this. Now, there are heaps of great tutorials about Voice Meter Banana online, and I won't bore you with those. You can get it from vb-audio.com and play around with it. But the one thing you need to know right now is that you just need to keep it simple. You only need to send whatever audio is on here to two separate devices. For us, that's our Elgato HD60 Pro, and then again out to our Focusrite Scarlett Solo so we can hear what we're playing. We've covered game audio and video so people can see and hear what we're playing. We've covered audio so our stream can hear us. But so our stream can see us, we're going to need a webcam. For us right now, we're using the Razer Kayo ones, which, full disclosure, they gave us to try out, and we're really, really enjoying those. In the other room, we've been using things like this Logitech, I think it's the C920 and that sort of thing, all really good webcams. The one thing about webcams that you need to know is that the webcam is only a half or even a quarter of the battle. Consumer webcams really struggle without a lot of light. The Razer Kayo figured this out and has the ring light on it, but it's still not really enough for us in this room. You can see I've got the softbox in here to get a bunch of light. I've also got the blinds open today so we get natural light, but we don't have that when we're streaming. Oh, yes! Oh, no! yes! <laughs> One of the things that I don't know if I figured out perfectly yet, but it was a question that I've always had was, how do we get this microphone to both computers? We obviously need this mic to be picked up on any game we're playing on the gameplay PC, but we also need that picked up on the OBS encoding machine. I'm not sure that this is the optimal way to do it, but this is at least how we did it for our setup. We've got our main microphone going in here, and then what we're doing is we're splitting that signal, so you can see two outputs out the back. One of those goes into the front of our Scarlet Solo, and then the other one is going out and back into the Behringer desk that you saw before. That desk is going straight into our streaming machine, and then this one is the one that's going into our gameplay machine. We're also then using this Scarlet Solo as our headphone monitoring for our gameplay machine. And that's basically how our whole setup works. The next question for us was how do we get another person visible and audible on stream playing games? Well, all we needed to do was make sure we had a second HD60 Pro, a second microphone, a second computer, a second webcam, and then we used the same method from before to get that all in. You will need custom drivers to run two HD60 Pros, but you can find those online pretty easily. Before I head off, I actually had a few questions from Twitter that I wanted to get to. Suspicious Pixel says, I'd like to know if your studio room has any sound treatment. At this stage, we're just operating out of what is essentially a converted office space, but there are a couple of things we have done to mitigate the sound issues that we do have. We've got a rug on the floor, 
easy. And then we have these big thick black curtains. I would also in the future like to have some foam up on the walls, but for now this is doing pretty good. All right, my buddy Sir Skank at Bungie asked, I always love hearing solutions for weird quirks and if I knew then what I know now sorts of things about setups. Well, the thing for all of this is that it doesn't seem to be any sort of official training for this sort of thing. I mean, if you've done an audio engineering course, you'll know part of it. If you've done a video production course, you'll know other parts. But streaming seems to be an entirely different beast altogether. That's why I personally am always searching for these types of videos, so hopefully this can help some people. The most recent issue I had, which was super annoying but turned out to be a really easy fix, was actually with Voice Meter Banana. I was getting this weird shuddering, popping, crackling sound, and it was just unplayable and unstreamable, so we actually had to cancel a stream one day. Turns out it was just because of the buffer size that our audio drivers were requiring. So a quick change there got rid of the issue completely. I think we switched from 512 to 1024. Now, there's probably a better way to do it, I just haven't figured it out yet, but that worked for me. Another one from Arma Fukor who asked, would love some input about how you did the dual Uno stream. That actually wasn't too tricky, and I've kind of shown you most of how that works already, but we did have one thing that I didn't think about before that stream. We had Gabe and I in here playing Uno, so one PC there and one PC there. That was fine. But what we needed to do was have Eric's and 269 on Discord, but not hear them twice. Now there are heaps of ways to do that. For example, you could use Voice Meter Banana to route the Discord audio only to Gabe's headphones and not outputting to the PC, the streaming PC. But the good thing about Uno is you only really need one active viewport to be able to see what's going on in the game at any one time. So we didn't need to have the audio from two PCs really, and we just switched his one off. But in the future, should we be playing other games, PUBG for example, you'd still want to be able to hear both computers active at one time, maybe quite low, and then you would only want one Discord, so we'll have to use Voice Meter Banana and that sort of thing for that. Again, there are a bunch of tutorials online that are much better than what I could tell you. Uber Timmy was also asking, can you explain the sound setup? I noticed you had a mixer, yep, and I'm looking into the same thing. Would like to know what program you use and how it's set up, also how you control the lights. I mentioned it before, but we have that desk going in through USB to our streaming machine, and that works really, really well. I actually didn't do that on our previous setup, so it was this mess of 3.5 millimeter cables and all sorts of things that I don't really like. So I'd recommend, if you are getting a mixer, to look at getting something that has USB compatibility. On the topic of lights, I actually want to do a dedicated video to that, but the ones we have in here were given to us by LifeX, all the RGB ones that you see. We have the strips up on the shelves behind where the camera is right now, and we have the strips behind the desk which are kind of just cool and just add a little bit more light in here. I've got an app for that as well that you can see here. So for example, I can turn off various lights, I can change the colors, and we can even do things like integration with if this then that.com, ifttt.com, where if something happens, for example, we have it set up if anyone follows the Engon channel to do some cool stuff on the ones on the shelves. But you could basically have them do anything at any time for any reason. And another question from George who says, I'd love to know what peripherals are being used as well. So we talked about the Razer Kayo, but you know what? I'm gonna grab the camera and we'll have a look at the other ones. We're using this guy here, which is a Steel Series Rival 300. And then we have this Corsair keyboard, which is an RGB K70 Rapid Fire, I think. All right, that's going to be it for today. I'm doing jazz hands now or something. But if you have any questions or comments, you want to know more about our settings or that sort of thing, just let us know in the comments down below and we'll get back to you. If you have a moment, leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you can, and we'll see you again next week. One last thing, do make sure that you have a box of cables. <laughs>